if you were thinking about selling this, maybe even shorting, did you have things like bearish divergence in the momentum indicators? Absolutely. Was Willie stupidly overbought? Absolutely. Did you have a bear div in RSI? Absolutely. Did you have a bear div in the buying volume? Absolutely. I think you can make a perfectly realistic argument that there actually is a short working here on these ETFs. I suppose we could say, well, you know, did this A, B, C, D? And is this maybe the end of a move here? And of course, you know, you've seen all the talk about the the Bitcoin price itself and, you know, all that. Uh, sure looks like a, that was an ABCD to me. And if anything, this is probably a really good analogy of the alt AB equals CDs. So bought setups, uh, did 33, but didn't go beyond 66. And, you know, you can see the inverted head and shoulders. I think that's where this set up. So we go there to there and then go bought trade. And of course, it's, oh, look at that. All right. Yeah. So you can see the inverted head and shoulders, it literally set up right off that bot entry level. This would have implied you had one low, two lows. So, you know, it would have been a bit aggressive. But uh, having said that, had you done the bull call spread here, uh, heading into the happening event, yeah, you would have made out like a bandit. Uh, and if anything, really good analogy that this one in particular, I've said to this to you before, Quite often what ends up happening with these is that they don't top at the bot, but they actually top a little bit higher. In this case, it looks like it put in, you know, there's that empire pattern. So this is a, a daily price chart, but you can see it's not really the prettiest, but nonetheless, there it is. So this actually becomes a sell signal on a move through that low right there, right? There's boom, 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 three bar empire sell. So yeah, I don't think there's anything shocking going on here. Uh, and then, you know, the ultimate question is, you know, if you were thinking about selling this, maybe even shorting, did you have things like bearish divergence uh, in the momentum indicators? Absolutely. Was Willie stupidly overbought? Absolutely. Did you have a bear div in RSI? Absolutely. Did you have a bear div in the buying volume? Absolutely. I mean, it goes on and on and on. So I think you can make a perfectly realistic argument that there actually is a short working here on these ETFs. Um, I'd probably say, uh, let's just use this range from the beginning of the year as sort of like your do 50% rule that, you know, keep it simple, stupid. Uh, the gentleman that I did a tutorial with yesterday, I just said, look, you're going to use the 50% rule as your profit objective on your L Tangonator setups. So you can see that all this would imply is that you're just coming in and filling in all these gaps in here, which I think makes sense. That's not rocket science. I'd also say too, uh, you know, from the trader's perspective, was it a risk worth taking? Do we get a two to one risk reward if we actually hit the 50% rule? So this is interesting. Uh, yeah, so right off of that fail level, risking the new highs, 2.17. So this is right in the wheelhouse of a very typical, you know, trader, if you will, uh, taking that short as well. So yes, we had trade location, alt ABCDs. Yes, we had bearish momentum divergence. This was a case of, are you comfortable trading candlestick fractal patterns? And the irony of it all is that I suppose you could even make the argument that maybe what's going to happen here is after the dust sort of settles down, maybe this carves out some sort of Adam and Eve setup and we actually start getting the options uh, to start uh, cooperating. Because as I showed you on the stocks like coin, this volatility was just way too much. The options prices were just way, way, way too high to consider. Also notice too, there's a cheeky little gap right up top there. So ironically enough, I, you're pretty much guaranteed that the market will have to go back up top there at some point. So I suppose the ICT kind of guy, I don't know whether this is the case or not, but eh, I kind of like uh, his fun little setup and it makes a lot of sense now uh, looking back in hindsight over my career because quite often if I had a top that would come in here, I got this nice M, I would short that, but then, oh geez, market goes and stops you out. And one thing I think that was missing from my sort of trading over the years was this 
kind of obsession that, you know, guys like ICT guy uh, has with this idea of sort of bullish market structure. Well, there's higher highs and higher lows. And I don't think you can really call this a short, um, you know, like structurally ICT guy until you actually get a close below this level here. Interestingly enough, you can kind of see how the market's heading in free fall here. If we do actually go and bust through this low, then whatever the sell off low is, draw your fib back up top and just hunt Mountain Man. And what you'll find, oh, what a surprise. Mountain Man here just happens to line up with this big old hole on the charts, the gap. You know, could you argue that this gapping action is the market basically in free fall? And that uh, guy's sort of conversation about, and I guess maybe there, I don't know, something like that, where uh, as soon as the market goes into free fall, that's where you're starting to measure your uh fair value gap kind of concept. Eh, I wouldn't be surprised if we do something like that, then like that, then back up and there's your short, right? And then it means your fair value gap is, uh, uh, just give me a second here, where are we? Uh, uh, there it is, uh, there we go, something like that. So well, let's keep an eye on this going forward. And then of course, like I said earlier, if we could actually get like a nice polite M up here. I don't think that this is going to happen though. Because I actually don't think that this is a bear market. I think what's going to happen here is it's going to bottom and then we're going to go up and make new highs like that. Why? Well, as I've showed you uh, in the past, I think that this is actually very similar to 2015-16, which is uh, this market. So I think we're going to do the post having correction and, you know, sky's falling, all that. But then we just grind our way higher and then go and blast off to new highs. I, I totally think this is what's going to happen here. Anyway, only time will tell. <laughs> Thank you.